Hi, I'm Chelsea and I'm the Geeky Ballerina. We are going to continue talking about elements of artistry, specifically elements of musicality. Today we're looking at tempo. Yep, this is simple. The only thing that is more foundational than tempo is rhythm. <laughs> we already talked about that. Tempo is speed. You can change the tempo that you are dancing at. That That's really all it is, which sounds like the biggest waste of time to say, but how many times have you watched a teacher that uses the same tempo for the same steps every single time? When we fall into this trap of using the same tempo for the same steps over and over and over, our dancers are missing an opportunity to grow. They're missing an opportunity to be physically challenged, to be mentally challenged, to have their listening skills challenged. We need to mix this up. But there are a few things to be careful of. For example, Little kids don't move as slowly as adults. When we are working with tempo with the littlest ones, they have a narrower range. Your teenage students can move really fast and really slow, but your littles are here. And there's a few reasons for it. Part of it is that their legs are so small, right? Like they just can't travel that much space. And so it's harder for them to slow down. Going slow is harder to balance. And so a lot of them don't have that core strength. And this is why playing with tempo is so beneficial to them. This is a great way to sneak in a little bit of core work, but you've got to keep it in that window where they can be successful. Being challenged within the window of possibility is awesome. Being challenged for something that is not age appropriate is not. It feels miserable. So we don't do that. Anytime you're varying the tempo for little kids, remember they do not move as slowly as you do. So keep it in the faster range, but still play in, in their window. Another thing to be aware of is your jumps also can't vary the tempo that much. You kind of get what you get and you don't get upset because gravity doesn't change. So I can change the tempo of my music, but the rate at which a body lands is always the same. We can speed jumps up. Speeding jumps up is useful within, a, again, that window of reasonableness. But if you slow it down too much, there's no way that your dancers will be able to be with the music. So instead of exploring tempo in a positive learning way, class just feels unsuccessful. Physics are real, gravity doesn't change, jumps can only work within a smaller window for tempo. Turns, on the other hand, can be played with quite a bit more. In fact, I really like to use chene when we are talking about the difference between rhythm and tempo because some people do confuse the two. Chene has an even rhythm and I can change the tempo. I can do really slow chene, I can do really fast chene, I can do all the different shades of medium, but the rhythm stays the same. Soutenu would also work. Soutenu is an uneven rhythm, but again, you have a really wide range of tempi that you can play in. One activity that is really fun for like seven, eight, nine usually, and then sometimes older, like if people are just kind of having a the day. I'll pull this one out. We start as a group and we all do whatever vocabulary you want to the tempo of the music. Walking or balance or whatever you want to do, right? Pick your vocabulary. We do it with the tempo of the music. And then you divide the class into three groups. Group one is going to keep the same tempo. Group two is going to do it half time. Group three is going to do it double time. If you haven't played with half time and double time before, you might want to do it as a group so that everybody knows what the half time is and everybody knows what the double time is. But once your kids are used to doing this, just toss it at them and ready, set, go. Three different speeds, same step, same rhythm, different speeds, and then rotate it so that everybody gets a chance to try every tempo. If you are interested in other elements of artistry, 
I include them on my website, geekyballerina.com. I have a blog there. You also can look at the lesson materials that I provide on my website, and you can sign up for my newsletter. Every month I talk about a technique tip and an element of artistry and how they work together. As always, I hope you have a really great class.